Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2022. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got a great conversation with Patrick Coughlin, Vice President of Go-To-Market Strategy and Specialization at Splunk. We're talking about the Open Cybersecurity Schema Framework, also known as the OCSF, a joint strategic collaboration between Splunk and AWS. It's got a lot of traction and momentum. Patrick, thanks for coming on theCUBE uh, for reInvent coverage. John, great to be here. I'm excited for this. You know, I love this open source movement and open source continues to add value, almost sets the standards. You know, we were talking uh, at the CNCF Linux Foundation this past uh, fall about how standards are coming out of open source, not so much the, the classic standards groups, but you start to see the developers voting with their code, groups deciding what to mm -hmm. adopt, de facto standards, and security is a real key part of that where data becomes key for resilience. And this has been the top conversation at reInvent and all around the industry is how to make data a key part of building into cyber resilience. So I want to get your thoughts about the problem that you see that's emerging that you guys are solving with this group kind of collaboration around uh, the OCSF. Yeah, well, look, John, I, I think I think you you've already you've already hit the high notes there. Uh, data is proliferating across the enterprise. Uh, uh, the attack surface area is rapidly expanding. The threat landscape is ever changing. Uh, you know, we we just had a um, a lot of uh, um, uh, scares around Open SSL. Um, before that, we had vulnerabilities in, in Confluence and Atlassian, and you go back to Log4j and SolarWinds before that, um, and, and challenges with the supply chain. Uh, in this year in particular, we've had um, a, a huge acceleration in in um, concerns and threat vectors around uh, operational technology. Um, in our customer base alone, we saw uh, um, a huge uptick, you know, in double digit percentage of customers that were concerned about the traditional vectors like like ransomware, uh, like business email compromise, phishing, but also from insider threat and others. Um, so you've got this this highly complex environment where data continues to proliferate and flow through um, uh, new applications, new infrastructure, new services, driving different types of outcomes in the digitally transformed enterprise of today. And, and what happens there is, is our customers, particularly in security, are, are left with having to stitch all of this together. And they're trying to get visibility across multiple different services, infrastructure, applications, um, across a number of different point solutions that they bought to help them protect, defend, uh, detect, and respond better. Um, and it's a massive challenge. And uh, you know, when our when our customers um, come to us, they are often looking for ways to drive more consolidation uh, across a variety of different solutions. They're looking to drive better outcomes in terms of speed to detection. How do I detect faster? How do I find the thing that went bang in the night faster? Um, how do I then fix it? Um, quickly, and then how do I layer in some automation so hopefully I don't have to do it again? Now, the challenge there that really OCF, OCSF helps to, to solve is to do that effectively, to detect and to respond at the speed at which attackers are demanding today, we have to have normalization of data across this entire landscape of tools, infrastructure, services. Uh, we have to have integration to have visibility. Um, and these tools have to work together. But the biggest barrier to that is often data is stored in different structures and in different formats across different solution providers, across different tools that are that are that our customers are using. Um, and that that lack of data normalization chokes the integration problem. And so um, you know, uh, uh, several years ago, a number of very smart people, and this was a, this was a uh, initiative um, started by Splunk and AWS, came together and said, "Look, we as an industry have to solve this for our customers. We have to start to shoulder this burden for our customers. We can't we can't make our customers have to be systems integrators. That's not their job. Our job is to help make this easier for them. And so um, OCSF was born." And over the last couple of years, um, we've built out this, this collaboration to not just be AWS and Splunk, uh, but over uh, 50 different organizations, um, uh, um, cloud service providers, solution providers in the cybersecurity space um, have come together and said, let's decide on a single unified schema for how we're going to represent event data 
in this industry. Um, and uh, I'm very proud to be here today to say that we've launched it and, and um, uh, I can't wait to see where we go next. Yeah, I mean, this is really compelling. I mean, there's so much packed in that in that statement. I mean, data normalization, you mentioned chokes, this, the, the solution and the integration as you call it. But really also it's like data is not just stored in silos. It may not even be available, right? So if you don't have availability of data, that's an important point. Number two, you mentioned supply chain. There's physical supply chain that's coming up big time at reInvent this time, as well as in open source, the software supply chain. So you now have the perimeter has been dead for multiple years. We've been talking about that for years. Everybody knows that. But now combined with the supply chain problem, both physical and software, there's so much more to go on. And so you know, the, the leaders in the industry, they're not sitting on their hands. They know this, but they're just overloaded. So, so how do leaders deal with this right now? Before we get into the OCSF, I want to just get your thoughts on what's the psychology of the, of the business leader who's facing this landscape? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, unfortunately, too many leaders feel like they have to face these trade-offs between you know, how and where they are really focusing cyber resilience investments in the business. Um, and, and often there is a siloed approach across security, IT, developer operations or engineering, um, rather than the ability to kind of drive visibility, integration, and, and connection of outcomes across those different functions. I mean, the truth is the telemetry that, that you get from an application for application performance monitoring or infrastructure monitoring is often incredibly valuable um, when there's a security incident. And vice versa, some of the security data um, that, that you may see in a security operations center can be incredibly valuable when trying to investigate a, a performance degradation in an application and understanding where that may come from. And so the, what we're seeing is this data layer is collapsing faster than the org charts are or the budget line items are in the enterprise. And so um, at Splunk here, you know, we believe security resilience is, is fundamentally a data problem. And one of the things that we do often is, is actually help connect the dots for our customers and bring our customers together across the silos they may have internally so that they can start to see a holistic picture of what resilience means for their enterprise and how they can drive faster de detection outcomes and more automation coverage. You know, we recently had an event called SuperCloud. We're going into the next gen kind of a cloud, how data and security are all kind of part of this next gen application. It's not just SaaS. And we had a panel that was titled, uh, the innovator's dilemma kind of talk about you know, some of the challenges. And one of the panelists said, it's not the innovator's dilemma, it's the integrator's dilemma. And you mentioned that earlier. And I think this is a key point. Right now, integration is so critical, not having the data and putting pieces together. And now open source is becoming a composability market. And I think having things snap together and work well, it's a platform system conversation, not a tool conversation. So I really want to get into where the OCSF kind of intersects with this, uh, area people are working on. It's not just solution architects or cloud cloud native SREs, it's actually where DevSecOps is. So this, right. this intersection is critical. How does OCSF integrate into that integration of the data, making that available to make machine learning and automation smarter and more relevant? Right, right. Well, look, I mean, I, I think that's a fantastic question because you know, we talk about, we use buzzwords like machine learning and, and AI all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I know they're all over the place here at reInvent. And, and um, the, there's so much promise and hope out there around these technologies and these innovations. However, uh, machine learning AI is only as effective as the data is clean and normalized. Uh, and, and we will not realize the promise of these technologies for outcomes in resilience unless we have better ways to normalize data upstream and better ways to integrate that data to the downstream tools where detection and response is happening. And so OCSF was really about the industry coming together and saying, this is no longer the job of our customers. We are going to create a unified schema that represents the, an event um, that we will all bite down on. Even some of us are competitors, you know, this is, this is that, that no longer matters because at the point, the point is how do we take this burden off of our customers and how do we make the industry safer together? Um, and so 15 initial members came together um, along with AWS and Splunk to, to start to create that, uh, that initial schema and standardize it. 
And if you've ever, you know, if you ever worked with a bunch of technical grumpy security people, it's kind of hard to drive consensus about around just about anything. But uh, um, but I, I'm really happy to see how quickly this this organization has come together, has open sourced the schema. Um, and 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 just as you said, like I think this this unlocks the potential for real innovation that's going to be required to keep up with the bad guys, but right now is getting stymied and held back by the lack of normalization and the lack of integration. I've always said Splunk was a, eats, eats data for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and turns it into insights. And I think you bring up the silo thing. What's interesting is the cross company sharing. I think this hits point on. So uh, I see this as a valuable opportunity for the industry. What's the traction on that? Because you know, to succeed, it does take a village, it takes a community of security practitioners and, and, and architects and developers to kind of coalesce around this de facto movement. Is been, has been the uh, uptake been uh, good? Has the traction? Can you share your thoughts on how this is translating across companies? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, I, I think um, cybersecurity has a, has a long track record of, of, of standards development. Um, there's been some fantastic standards recently, things like um, sticks and taxi for threat intelligence. There's been things like the, you know, the MITRE attack framework coming out of my MITRE and, and, and the adoption, the traction that we've seen with attack in particular has been amazing to watch how that has kind of roared onto the scene in the last couple of years and has become table stakes for um, how you do security operations and incident response. Um, and, you know, I think with OCSF, we're going to see something similar here, but, you know, we are in you know, literally the first innings of, of this. Um, so right now, you know, we're architecting this into our, um, into every part of our sort of backend systems here at Splunk. I know um, our, our collaborators at AWS and elsewhere are doing it too. And so I think it starts with bringing this standard. Now that the standard exists on a, uh, you know, in schema format, um, and there, there's, you know, confluence and Jira tickets around it. How do we then sort of build this into the code of, of the, the collaborators that have been leading the way on this? And, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, but I think in the coming quarters, you'll start to see this schema um, be the standard um, across the leaders in this space, companies like Splunk and AWS and others who are leading the way. And often that's what helps drive adoption of a standard is if you can get the the big dogs, so to speak, to 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 embrace it, and and you know, there's no bigger one than AWS, um, and I think there's no no more important one than Splunk in the cybersecurity um, um, space. And so, as we adopt this, we hope others will follow. And and like I said, we've got over 50 organizations contributing to it today, and so um, I think we're off to a running start. You know, it's interesting choking innovation or having things kind of get get slowed down has really been a problem. We've seen successes recently over the past few years, like Kubernetes has really unlocked and accelerated the cloud native worlds of runtime with containers to, to kind of have the consensus of the community say, hey, if we just do this, it gets better. I think this is really yeah. compelling with the, um, the OCSF because if people can come together around this and get unified, as well as all the, the other official standards, things can go highly accelerated. So I think, I think it looks really good and, and I think it's a great initiative and I really appreciate your insight on that. On, on your relationship with Amazon, okay, it's not just a partnership, it's a, it's a strategic collaboration. Could you share that uh, relationship dynamic? How to start, how's it going? What's strategic about it? Share to the audience kind of the relationship between Splunk and ADOS on this important OCSF initiative. Look, I, I mean, I think this this year marks the the tenth year anniversary that, that Splunk and AWS have been collaborating in a variety of different ways. Um, I, I think our our companies have um, uh, a fantastic and and long standing relationship, and we've we've partnered on a number of really important projects together that bring value, um, obviously to our individual companies, uh, but also to our shared customers. Um, uh, when I think about some of the most important customers. At Splunk, that I spend a significant amount of time with, um, uh, I, I I know how many of those are are AWS customers as well, and I know how important AWS is to them. So I think it's it's a it's a collaboration that is rooted in in a respect for each other's technologies um, and innovation, but also in a recognition that that our shared customers want to see us work better together over time. And it's not its not two companies that have kind of decided in a back room that they should work together. It's actually our customers that are that are pushing us 
Um, and I think we're, we're both very customer centric organizations. And I think that has helped us actually be better collaborators and better partners together um, because we're, we're working back, backwards from our customers. As security becomes a physical and software approach, we've seen the trend where even Steven Schmidt at Amazon Web Services is, is the CSO, he's not the CISO anymore. So he, and I asked right. him why, he says, well, security is also physical stuff too. So, so he's, right. the lens is now expanded. You mentioned supply chain, physical, digital. This is an important inflection point. Can you summarize in your mind why open cybersecurity schema for me is important? Uh, I know the unification, but beyond that, what, why is this so important? Why should people pay attention to this? You know, I, if, if you'll let me be just a little abstract and meta for a second, I think what's, what's really meaningful at the highest level about the OCSF initiative, um, and that goes beyond, I think, the tactical value it will provide to, to organizations and to customers in terms of making them safer um, over the coming years and, and decades. I think what's more important than that is, it's really the one of the first times that you've seen um, the industry come together and say we got a problem we need to solve that you know doesn't really have anything to do with with our own economics. Um, our customers are are hurting, and yeah, some of us may be competitors. Um, uh, you know, we got different cloud service providers that are participating in this along with AWS. We got different cybersecurity solution providers participating in this along with Splunk. Um, but but folks have come together and say, we can actually solve this problem um, if, if we're able to kind of put aside our competitive differences in the markets and approach this from the perspective of what's best for information security as a whole. Um, and, and I think that's what I'm most proud of uh, and, and what I hope we can do more of in other places in this industry, because I think that kind of collaboration from real market leaders can actually um, change markets. It can change the, the the trend lines in terms of how we are keeping up with the bad guys. And, and I'd like to see a lot more of that. And we're seeing a lot more new kind of things emerging in the cloud, Next kind of this next generation architecture and outcomes are happening. I think it's interesting, you know, we always talk about sustainability, supply chain sustainability, about making the earth a better place, but you're hitting on this, this meta point about businesses are under threat of going under. I mean, we want to keep businesses to businesses to be sustainable, not just, you know, the, the environment. So if a business goes out of business, which the, the threats here are, can be catastrophic for companies. I mean, there is, there is a community responsibility to protect businesses so they can sustain mm -hmm. and, and stay, yeah. stay producing. This is a real key point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, I think, I think one of the things that you know we we, we complain a lot of in in cybersecurity about the lack of of talent and the talent shortage in cybersecurity and every year we kind of we kind of um, whack ourselves over the head about how hard it is to bring people into this industry and it's true, um, but one of the things that I think we forget, John, is is how important mission is to so many people in what they do for a living and how they work. And I think one of the things that cybersecurity is strongest in information security in general and has been for decades is this sense of mission. And people work in this industry be, not because it's 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 always the 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 most lucrative, but because it, it really drives a sense of um, safety and security in the enterprises and the fabric of the economy that we use every day to go through our lives. And when I think about the Splunk customers and AWS customers, I think about um, um, the the different products and tools that power my life. And and we need to secure them. And, and sometimes that means coming to work every day at that company and, and doing your job. And sometimes that means working with others better, faster and stronger to help drive that level of, of, of maturity and security that this industry needs. It's a human, it's a human opportunity, human problem and, and challenge. That's a whole nother segment, the role of the talent and the human machines and with scale. Patrick, thanks so much for sharing um, uh, the, the information and the insight on the open cybersecurity schema framework and what it means and why it's important. Thanks for sharing on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, John. Okay, this is AWS reInvent 2022 coverage here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the host. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.